Oof, this was a hard one, but we made it. The Logic 1.4 is out. This is the last big 1. Point something update. From now on, the team and I will start working on Dialogic 2.0. Patches to bugs present on 1.4 will happen, but no new big features will be added. Or at least, that's what we have planned. Before talking more about Dialogic 2, let's see what version 1.4 brings to the editor. The first thing you'll notice is how different the timeline editor looks like. I wasn't a fan of the blocky events, and they filled the screen too much and they had too little information, so they had to go. The new simplified events are there to help you understand the flow of the branches better. The speech bubbles are used for the dialogue, so it's easier to parse with your eyes and see where the content is. Many of the already existing events got improvements, but the biggest one is the character event. Previously, you had two different events, character join and character leave. They are now merged in the same event with an addition of the update option. You now have better control of the animations for your portraits, and we know this is something important for your games, so I hope this helps you improve your scenes. Join, leave or update have different animations, and if you want to add new ones, you can create them and add them to Dialogic using Anima's animation system. The text event has new commands. Signal, Pause, Play, and NV. And if you want to randomize some repetitive conversations, you can make a list of words like this, and Dialogic will pick a random one each time. There are two new events that you can use to jump to specific parts of the timeline, the Label event and the Go to event. The Call Node event now sends arguments instead of single arrays. If you were using it in one of your timelines, you will need to update the functions that you're calling. So if the function that you were calling was something like this, now it should be something like this, with as many arguments as you have in the event settings. We now have display timeline button at the top of your timeline editor, which will create a scene with your timeline so you can preview it without having to launch your entire game so you can test independently and quicker. Outside of the timeline, you can set themes per character, specify hotkeys for choices, a new feature was added to enable a history love, and a few more quality of life improvements are in the settings menu and in the character editor. The change log is bigger and you have a link in the description if you want to check the full list of updates. But now let's talk about the future and Dialogic 2. The biggest problems on the last two updates were keeping backwards compatibility, and we believe that now is a good moment to start a new page in the Dialogic history and break everything that needs to be fixed. That means that you won't be able to update your projects from Dialogic 1 to Dialogic 2 that easily, but I believe it will be worth it. We can now rethink many aspects of how to structure the internal code of the plugin. Now we have a better idea of what works and what doesn't. So moving forward, we are not improvising anymore. We are building a tool that, if we get it right, you won't notice it's there. Thank you very much for all your donations, support, pull requests and general feedback with the project. It really means a lot to me and the team. See you soon.